name's Ahan and I'm the Chief Education Officer of HVAC. Today, I want to start talking about our unit on what makes a good business. In this unit, we want to qualitatively understand the aspects of a business that make it a benefit, a good business to own. This is a company that you'd want to buy the stock in or you might want to buy the company outright. And this is very useful for helping you compare between different companies. A lot of really good investors can very easily talk about a good business idea, a good business plan, or a good business strategy. Warren Buffett, he can tell what is a good business by just reading qualitatively what the business is about. This is really useful when you're trying to figure out businesses that you might want to buy stock in. You don't want to go into the financials um, and build models for every single company. You want to qualitatively have an intuitive understanding of why this is a good business. To start our discussion, I want to talk about this concept of a sustainable competitive advantage. What is a sustainable competitive advantage? Now, a great example to illustrate this by is using ROIC, or the Return on Invested Capital. So let's assume that we have six factories, and these factories produce widgets. Now, this is a very common example in a lot of finance classes, factories making widgets. So for every dollar that our factory um, spends or invests into the business, um, they produce 10 cents of profit. This is a return on invested capital, our ROIC of 10%. For every dollar you put in, you're going to get 10 cents of profit. Now that's a pretty good ROIC, but all six factories have the same ROIC, 10%. And maybe they're all producing the same thing, right? They're all producing the same widgets. Now let's say another factory can all of a sudden get an ROIC of 15%. So for every dollar they put in, they can get 15 cents back. How can they do that? Maybe they hired some Harvard professors to optimize their assembly process. Maybe they have some cost advantages in their production. Now, this is great, but is this a sustainable competitive advantage? It's definitely a competitive advantage right now, but can it be a competitive advantage in the long run? If you look back to our kickoff, we talked about investing is about expectations. So if this is something that is sustainable, that nobody else will be able to copy because there's some certain aspects to this sixth factory here that allowed them to get this 15% ROIC, then maybe this is a good business to own because nobody else will be able to get that 15% ROIC. But most likely, especially with improvements in process like this, we see that it's very easy for other factories and other manufacturers to copy it. So there was a cost advantage, a competitive advantage to this company, but it was not sustainable. Maybe after a few years, that gap has closed and everyone is now producing a 15% ROIC. So that's a great example of why we want to understand uh, business qualitatively here. We can see that this 15% ROIC in the end, for every dollar they put in, they're going to produce a little bit more money and this will be better for shareholders. Now, I want to talk about a very basic acronym framework that we use here on HVAC, which is a good starting point to value um, a business qualitatively. And that's NCIS. No, not like the TV show, NCIS. It's an acronym. The N in NCIS stands for network effects. What are network effects? Imagine an app like Facebook, but without any of your friends on it. Would you use that? Imagine an app like Tinder, but there are no profiles to swipe on. Imagine a Twitter, but the Twitter was empty. There were very few people on it. What makes these platforms so valuable is the users that they already have because the more users they have, the more other users are going to want to join them. So that is the network effect. The larger the company go, grows, the more valuable the company will become just because it's easier for users to join in. There's also a sense of FOMO. You don't want to miss out on something by not being on here. In fact, there's a whole department within economics of studying the, uh, class networks. And there's some classes at Harvard you can take um, that specifically study network effects. The next category in NCIS is C, cost advantages. A cost advantage is very similar to what we discussed in the first example. The, the factory was able to produce widgets faster, better, cheaper. They were able to produce them a little cheaper to increase their ROIC. So some businesses have really great cost advantages. Um, and one way you can get a cost advantage is by scale. And a great example of this is Costco. Costco is able to secure products for cheaper rates, for cheaper prices, and then sell them to consumers at a discount. That is good for consumers because they want to come and shop there because everything's a little cheaper, but Costco can also pocket some of those savings and turn that into profit on that side. Amazon can get cost advantages by having an extremely large fulfillment and delivery network. So every time um, Amazon is growing, their cost for shipping a package keeps on going lower and lower and lower. So it's a game of scale there. The next 
um, aspect in NCIS is intangibles. What is an intangible? An intangible is something you can't really touch or see. For network effects, we can count the number of users. So for cost advantages, we can actually see the savings. But the intangibles are a little harder. Let me give you a quick question here. Would you drink Pepsi or would you drink Coke? Most people would drink Coca-Cola. Why? Because the Coca-Cola brand name is so much more recognizable than Pepsi. Maybe the formulas are a little different and maybe the Coca-Cola has a slightly better taste. But most people will turn to Coke because there's this intangible brand value associated with it. If you wanted to buy a very, very expensive car, you're not gonna go and buy like a super random unknown sports car. You're gonna wanna go and buy a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. Why? Because there's this intangible with the brand name. When you see a Ferrari driving down the street, you stop and you look and say, whoa, that's Ferrari. You don't do that if you necessarily see a random sports car. Maybe it's a Formula One sports car, but it's still not a Ferrari. The next and last aspect of NCIS is switching costs. And this is a great example. Switching costs is how hard it is to switch from one brand or one product to another. So let's think of an example that most of us can be are familiar with, your iPhone. On your phone, you probably paid some money for apps. You probably have a case. You probably have uh, some accessories. Maybe you have a pair of AirPods. Now, let's say you want to go out and buy an Android phone. All of a sudden, all that money you've spent on apps and all those accessories is out the, is out the window. You'll have to rebuy everything on your new phone. So it's probably just cheaper for you to just buy the new iPhone. Maybe the new iPhone is a little expense, more expensive now, but for all this money that you'll save by not having to switch, it's probably going to be better for you in the long run. A really great place where we see high switching costs is the SaaS industry. SaaS is software as a service, and this is normally enterprise software. So think Oracle, Salesforce, Workday, which is an HR platform. These are software pieces for big companies to manage their workforce um, and their data. So think about Oracle. If you use an Oracle database, it's very hard to move your data to another database. Maybe you have billions and billions of records in your database and you don't have the team, the time, uh, or the money to switch it over. So you're just gonna keep on paying Oracle for those support contracts and keep on using Oracle um, just because it's just easier to use it than to switch. So switching costs is actually a very important aspect to any business. And that's something that uh, we encourage a lot of people to look when you're looking at technology companies. So together, NCIS, network effects, cost advantages, intangibles, and switching costs. These are four key things that are important to many good businesses. But remember, not all good businesses have to excel in NCIS. Maybe they excel in other categories. But this is normally what we recommend everyone to start when they're looking at businesses. So if you want to start trying to find something to invest in your portfolio and you're going through a list of companies, start thinking maybe for each company, think about the N, the C, the I, and the S, and then look at the business in that way. Don't necessarily try to hit the financials first. This is probably a good approach when you're looking at a lot of great companies. Great, so we've covered ROIC and NCIS in this video. In our next video, we're gonna look at two formal frameworks for quantifying a little bit now these intangible qualitative aspects of what makes a good business. I'll see you then.